Hey guys, welcome back to another planner related video. Today I'm doing a draw my planner life. Um, I don't actually know if this is a thing, but let's do it. Draw my life is like way of an old format, but uh, I never did one and here I am doing my best. Um, I was asked actually by Marushka, my summer touch to do a planner evolution video. And since I uh, don't have a lot of my early planning stuff with me, um, it just, it's lost to time. Um, I thought I would do a little bit of a combo draw my planner life slash planner evolution video. So here we are. This whole story of planning and my relationship to it began uh, in school. I think like most of us, I had a school planner. I was homeschooled uh, from second grade through high school. So my mom provided us with a school planner, you know, like one of those A5-ish size uh, with a weekly layout. Um, looks like this. And she would have, uh, she would write down our different assignments for the day and then have us highlight them when they were complete. So, um, it, you know, so you could see, like, instead of crossing it off, if you highlight it, you can still see what it was so she could keep track of what we had done. Um, and it also was just kind of a great motivator to be able to put something in a nice color when it was done. So that's how I kept track of my daily assignments. Then we go to college and I still, you know, knew that that's what you do. They handed you a planner like during orientation and it was the same kind of format, the A5 spiral bound um, weekly, like horizontal weekly format. And so I would use that um, at the beginning of the semester, I would pull up my syllabi and I would copy out all of the due dates into my planner so I knew what was coming up. Um, usually I would be pretty good about looking a couple weeks in the future to see what was coming. Sometimes I would use it to write actual like tasks for the day. Other times it was just kind of reference and I didn't look at it for weeks at a time. Mostly I would use my notebooks for class as well to keep track of what I needed to do. Um, but nothing was in like a, I didn't think of it as a system. It was just like you have a planner for school. And so I did put all of my deadlines in there. Everything I ended up getting done and I graduated with honors. So I guess it worked. I, after I graduated college, I didn't have a planner for a while and I didn't realize that I missed it, but at some point um, I got a hold of this tiny little like wallet or kind of a checkbook size, a uh, little calendar, pocket calendar. Originally it was meant to keep like a list of everybody's birthdays in the family, but that never ended up getting filled out all the way. And since I had it like in my car, I grabbed it and I started actually using it and keeping track of the things I needed to do generally in my life. So I would put like to do tasks on my weeks. And that was the first time I ever really used a planner for personal like task tracking at all um, outside the realm of like schoolwork. Um, at that time, I was doing my Hogwarts.com and I was a student at Hogwarts at that time. So I actually did have school assignments <laughs> of a sort. And so I would actually um, at some point like half the stuff in there at least started to become school assignments as well as my personal life. And I kind of liked the idea of having another school planner for my Hogwarts years. So I actually DIY'd myself a little school planner. I used the comb binder that we had at the office at work and I, um, I made it all pretty, you know, I printed out a cover page and it was the exact same weekly format that I was used to. And I used it for all of my assignments for, uh, for my Hogwarts, and I also used it for my personal tasks. It just, I wanted to have everything in one place. And that has always been, I guess, how my planning system has worked, even though I never really thought about it in that way until I got into the planner community later on. So the next thing that happened in my life that I needed to plan for was uh, getting engaged and planning a wedding. And I definitely felt like I needed a place to consolidate all of that uh, planning into one place and so i picked this guy up from walmart it's just like a leather at like cover it's got a little magnet closure uh for a mini um legal pad and this is all that's left of it because i didn't used to archive things i would rip out the pages as they were done but basically i was bullet journaling before i knew what a bullet journal was um i had like a page at the front, one page for each month. And I went through and like wrote down 
the things that I wanted to get done each month. And then um, after that, I had like each month split up into weeks and I did it like that. And then there was pages, you know, I would take a page of notes when we were visiting venues. I would take a page of notes when we were interviewing vendors um, and all of that. I had all of my planning in here. And so all that's left are the, um, the gifts we received um, from the shower and from the wedding here, here, and then a couple of like business cards and stuff. And um, because I, I never used it again after that. But shortly after uh, we got married, in fact, like two months, like exactly a month after we got married, I saw a YouTube video or I saw a video on YouTube that led me to learn about the bullet journal. And so I started doing a bullet journal in 2016, the summer of 2016. This small skein started July 2016. And um, I've done a whole video uh, flipping through this. I will try to remember to link that in the corner. Um, this is the point from this journal onward that I started having a YouTube channel. And so you'll be able to find all of the details of like how I plan on all of these. Um, if you go to my channel and you can search like there's playlists for each kind of planner that'll kind of give you an idea. I have flip throughs of all of these. So I started with just a standard A5 Moleskine dot grid and that worked well for me for a while. I had every intention of sticking with that Moleskine for another several months until I ran out of space. But then, as social media does, uh, it kind of drew me into some new ideas and got me brainstorming, and I really was interested in trying out a traveler's notebook system for my bullet journal. So I ended up deciding to start with that system for January. So I ordered um, a traveler's notebook cover off Etsy, and the problem with that <laughs> was that I accidentally forgot to update my, bill my shipping address. And so it got sent to my old apartment. I contacted management. I contacted the the current resident, or at least I think I tried to. Never was able to track it down. I hope that that resident is happy with their traveler's notebook cover. Maybe they got really lucky or maybe they had no idea what it was. Anyway, it wasn't that expensive because I wasn't willing to like invest hundreds of dollars in a notebook at that point. So it was fine. I ended up... Um, ordering one later. But in the meantime, it didn't get there in time, but I had already set up all of my inserts and I was ready to go for January. So I had to kind of DIY a little makeshift traveler's notebook for the first month or so of January um, 2017. And so I took an old file folder that I had and I cut it to size and I took a rubber band and I tied it in a knot and I Threw it around there. I cut some other like slits and holes in there and, and used some rubber bands and I MacGyvered a little like cardstock traveler's notebook cover. And it was so ugly, but it worked great. And even though I didn't feel like, yay, this is so gorgeous, look at me holding this, just holding it and using it made me so happy because I really loved the format and the way that I had everything split up into different notebooks. Um, so it was definitely worth it. And I was all the more excited when I finally was able to order a real traveler's notebook cover. So the journal I ended up getting after the DIY thing and the failed delivery was a Foxy Fix. This is the uh, Wanderlust leather in the color creme brulee or something like that. Um, it's just a basic leather cover and it's fine. It never laid flat, which was something that kind of bothered me. It's a little bit stiff. Um, I, I think I've seen people mention this leather is similar to like the Chic Sparrow creme brulee, but I don't really know. I've heard people refer to this as floppy and I don't know what they're talking about. It was fine. I, I enjoyed it for several months um, and I loved the format, um, but then eventually I wanted something with pockets. So I grabbed this on a buy sell trade group. I got these both on buy sell trade used. This is a Chic Sparrow um, uh, what's it called? Outlander. And this color is called Verona. These are both personal size. Um, I wanted something a little bit smaller than the A5. And I was in this for a good amount of time. Um, but I finally, after a while, started to feel like these pages were too narrow for me. Um, and so I decided when the second chance sale came around, 
from Chic Sparrow, I decided to size down to the pocket size, which is very slightly narrower, but significantly shorter. Um, so when I was in here, and I'll show you this one, this is a um, also this uh, Outlander leather, but this is the color wine. I really love the color variation along the spine of this. This was a second chance and I, I forget now why I think that was the case because it's pretty gorgeous and I, I loved being in this one. It just felt so classy. Um, eventually I also picked this guy up on a buy sell trade. Uh, this is the Pemberley Angel, and I still have this set up from the last time I used it as a planner. So I can kind of show you a little bit of how I used it as a planner. Again, this is all chronicled on my YouTube channel, but let's see if I remember. Uh, this front section was in uh, Annie Plans printable uh, of monthlies. So it's just monthly calendars that I use for like my future log. Then I had short term long term long term collections so the idea was i would set up collections in here and use them for like the full year and i had plenty of room to do that the next one here is actual like daily and weekly planning so i would set up like a weekly and then do daily is like this generally and then the next one here i believe is the short term collections yeah so i had a separate notebook for short term collections that would be like more likely to obs to obsolete themselves, to become obsolete, and then I would replace this whole insert. Um, and I would, you know, redo anything that needed to be redone, but most of the things that I wanted to keep in here were in this front one. And then after that, I have in here a um, pregnancy planning insert. That's Agnes when she was, I don't even know, probably 30 something weeks. Um, and so this was also from Annie Plans, this planning insert for the baby. I am, as you could imagine, a lot less uptight about the second pregnancy coming up. It's, uh, it's a little bit easier because we already have most of the gear. Fortunately, I would not want to be a first time mom pregnant during coronavirus. Anyway, this is the setup. I was in the pocket traveler's notebook for a while. I loved it, but I started getting tempted to try out rings. So I grabbed this because it was so affordable. This is an Asian vintage TN um, notebook ring planner. Right now it's currently set up with um, these like Filofax inserts that I don't use. And it's like a coloring book for my daughter. Um, so I've got like these little poo dividers in here that I'm not using and that's just for her. But um, I, I loved the rings. I didn't love this notebook so much. I also have, I think, a video reviewing it on my channel. The problem with it is that the um, the raw leather kind of would rub off, like the dye from the leather would rub off on any sort of paper I had in here, which I found really annoying. I also found that having this traveler's notebook elastic closure was just a pain, and more often than not, I wouldn't even bother to close it. it lies nice and flat open or closed and so that wasn't the issue um but i just found it kind of annoying and eventually i decided i wanted to try a file fax so i saved up i don't know if i still have cards left over but if so there's a video about how i saved up for this guy this is my first file fax it's a malden stone same pocket size i love these pockets i have been in the file fax malden ever since um about a year and a half now. Um, I love it. I am currently in this ochre, which I got uh, off Facebook Marketplace more recently. So that is where I am right now. I really do like the um, the rings. You can check out, there's all kinds of flip throughs of this if you want to see what my planner system looks like right now. I think last week's was a, no, the week before I think was a flip through. So you can check that out. Um, I really like the ability to move things around, like my TN setup where I had like long-term collections and short-term collections. Here, anything can be like that, and I can get rid of inserts that I'm no longer using and they don't take up space, which is really the big thing that I love, as well as just being able to move things. So I'm, I'm really enjoying the rings. I don't feel like I want to change. Um, I did, again, a whole video about that, about why I'm happy in my current setup and not looking to change. So um, lots of extra viewing if you're interested, if you're new here, um, 
there's there's all kinds of videos for you to check out, but go ahead and subscribe before you forget because I do post videos twice a week and every Thursday is a new planner video. So if you uh, your interest has been <laughs> piqued by my planner journey, you're welcome to hop along and uh, to join me. And I will see you guys in the next video on Sunday, which is going to be, oh yeah, <laughs> work from home vlog. We'll see how that goes because I'm filming it tomorrow. All right. Love you guys. See you later. Bye.